Welcome to another edition of the Live 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we take a look at big idea number two. Today's video is just going to be a quick intro and overview of this big idea. So without me talking any further, let's go ahead and get on into it. By the end of this video, you should understand the theme of Big Idea 2 and be able to give a brief summary of each of the enduring understandings. Now, before we even jump into it, I will let you know that I kind of feel like the College Board took all of the leftover bits of the AP curriculum and crammed them into Big Idea number two. There is an overarching theme, and I think we can make some sense out of it, but I will let you know that there are some random bits that fit together kind of weirdly and that we're going to go through the section in an order that is asynchronous. So we're not going to go through it as the College Board had laid it out, but we're still going to get all the material in under Big Idea 2 that they had intended. So let's go ahead and make a quick roadmap for where we're going to be going in the next two or three months. Big Idea 2, general idea is that systems use energy and matter to grow, reproduce, and maintain homeostasis. This big idea is going to be all about maintaining life, getting the stuff you need to grow, getting the stuff you need to reproduce, and maintaining balance within living systems. We're going to be looking at living systems from the bacterial scale all the way up to the ecosystem scale. So we're going to do some cell biology, we're going to do some ecology, we're going to do some gene regulation, we're going to talk about hormones, there's a lot of different things we're going to be talking about. So that's the big idea. And as I talk about each of the enduring understandings, I'm going to use life as shorthand for several things. Each of the enduring understands, understandings talks about maintaining processes necessary for life. And for the rest of the video, when I say life, I am including in that term the ability to grow, the ability to reproduce, and the ability to maintain dynamic homeostasis. Remember from basic bio, homeostasis is just balance or right standing within the organism or within the system. So everything that goes into this unit is going to be strategies that living organisms or systems use to grow, reproduce, or maintain homeostasis. So let's talk about those enduring understandings. Like I said, we're going to go a bit out of order. So we're going to start out with Enduring Understanding 2B, which is that life requires that cells create internal environments different from external environments. For the first part of our class, we talked all about evolution, all the way up from the beginnings of the first organic molecules to the evolution of humans. In that course, we talked about the development of cells, and so this is going to flow right off of that idea with cells developing. In order for a cell to maintain homeostasis and get the things it needs, it needs its internal environment to be separate from the outside environment. So this first part of our unit is going to be all about the cell membrane. We'll move from the cell membrane to 2A, which is that life requires energy. Living systems, if they are going to grow, reproduce, and maintain homeostasis, have to be able to take in energy. So at the cellular level, we're going to be talking about cellular respiration and photosynthesis, but we're also going to talk about food webs and food chains and trophic pyramids and a little bit of the carbon cycle and some ecology principles. From ecology and the maintaining of energy or the obtaining of energy, we will move on to 2D, which is that living systems are influenced by environmental changes. So whether we are talking about the living system of a cell or a full ecosystem, changes outside those systems can influence what goes on inside of the system. So there will be a lot of different topics within this. One of them will be the immune system, but we'll also talk about ecosystems responding to uh, natural disturbances, basically talk about how the biological systems keep going when things go out of whack. Then we're going to go to 2C, which is life is regulated by feedback, feedback mechanisms. So if our living systems have got boundaries, if they are obtaining the energy they need, if they are responding to disturbances, they also need to be able to regulate their internal environments. In this case, feedback mechanisms are going to talk mostly about the endocrine system, so we're going to be talking about hormones, but we'll also be talking about body temperature and some other mechanisms that are regulated by positive and negative feedback loops. And then we're going to wrap up with 2E, which is that life processes require temporal regu regulation and coordination. Now that sounds really really complicated. Basically, we're going to be talking about gene expression because if living systems, particularly cells and organisms, are going to maintain homeostasis, they have to be able to control when genes are turned on or when genes are turned off so that certain processes are happening at certain times. And that's it. That is our roadmap for really 
all the way until Christmas. So I hope that kind of gave you some idea where we're going. Um, I might recommend starting up a little concept map using what I've just talked about, and then we'll be building off of it through the course of this unit. All that being said, thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast, and I hope we'll see you again. Thank you.